The 13th Amendment to the Constitution abolished the legal practice of slavery. Yet today, millions of children, women, and men are enslaved or forced to work in slavery-like conditions in every corner of the world. This new form of slavery is called human trafficking and is quite different from the slavery of the past. Is human trafficking a problem in San Mateo County? How does it affect you and me? Here to answer those questions is John Vanek, retired San Jose Police Department Lieutenant, book author and member of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services National Advisory Committee on the Sex Trafficking of Children and Youth in the United States. He is also the San Mateo County Human Trafficking Program Coordinator. I'm happy to welcome John Vanek to take notice. Great to have you here, John. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. So, John, the words human trafficking sound like smuggling people across an international border, something we don't think about in San Mateo County. But is it much broader than that? It is. Human trafficking really isn't the best term to be used, actually, because many people think that it has to do with smuggling people across borders, mm -hmm. when in fact there is really, uh, sometimes they're intermixed, but human trafficking is really speaking about enslavement, mm -hmm. forcing somebody to do something they don't want to do through the use of force or fraud or coercion. And those things typically are ranging in some type of commercial sex trade, such as forced prostitution, mm -hmm. or some type of other labor or services, could be like domestic servitude or working in factories or fields or domestic servitude. So it's about engaging someone in slavery or slave-like practices and really not about movement. Mm -hmm. You don't have to cross a border. You don't even have to move someone across the street in order to commit an act of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. So uh, how many victims of trafficking are there in the world, the United States or even San Mateo County? I know it's a tough question. It's a very <laughs> tough question. Uh, globally, um, there's estimates that, that run as high as 40 million, give or take, around the, uh, around the world. 40 million? Very high. Wow. Yes. Um, but again, these are estimates that are actually based on very limited data. Mm -hmm. Within the United States, we lack centralized reporting protocols on victims identified and um, that are served by, by agencies that serve victims of crime. So we've had a couple different estimates in the United States, um, but they're not in alignment with one another. And in fact, the federal government itself does not publish its own data on the number of victims identified. Um, because it's better, it's better we don't put out bad or incorrect numbers uh, or poorly estimated numbers. Um, and if we come down to the local levels, then we can begin to start putting some real numbers together. Um, but they still suffer from lack of coordinated reporting. Mm -hmm. So in the county, um, one of the things that the human trafficking program is doing is doing an assessment. We're looking at all of the available records. We're talking to all of the people that help victims. And we're going back as far as three years to give us some context, uh, context about the number of uh, victims identified in the county. And so um, if you invite me back in a few months, I'll have a better answer for you. But I can tell you that trafficking has occurred it is occurring, and um, we're working very dif uh, diligently to expand our identification. So that's great to hear that, that they're starting the data process. Uh, are there any other counties or um, states that are doing something similar, do you know? Well, so California is one of the most um, robust states in terms of its response to human trafficking. Uh, when I first started this work in 2006 in San Jose, uh, this was really kind of the beginning of the efforts to respond to trafficking in the nation. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we had federally funded task forces in San Francisco and Oakland and San Jose. And that federal funding really helped all of us kind of have a jump start. And, mm -hmm. and the Bay Area has always been very responsive and interested in trafficking. So um, uh, there, there are a lot of intensive efforts um, all around the county, both at the governmental levels, law enforcement, both federal and local, um, in the area of victim services provision, agencies that help victims of crime, and also an awful lot of passion and good work is being done by community-based, faith-based organizations, or organizations that are not doing direct victim services, but they're engaged in reaching out to the public, raising awareness, um, they're training different um, industries 
uh, about how to identify human trafficking. A and the work of the San Mateo Human Trafficking Program is to try and bring all of these different efforts together under one roof so we all understand who's doing what and how we can support each other. Great, it's great to hear that California and San Mateo County uh, are both taking the lead in such a, an important uh, uh, area such as this. Um, you know, I came to understand that in July of, uh, or in 2016, I'm not sure if it was July or not, but a, a jury uh, issued the first ever human trafficking conviction in San Mateo County. And in February 2018, a, sh a, a very aware American Airlines ticket agent intercepted two young girls on their way from Sacramento to a probable trafficker. Yes. Is human trafficking right under our noses and we don't see it? It is, and it's, um, you'll, you'll hear it spoken about as being a hidden crime or, or that we have to look beneath the surface. And the reality of it is that it's much more visible than many people think, um, but you have to know where and how to look for it. Mm -hmm. And um, the case, the conviction in San Mateo County um, is, is also a bit of a, uh, a misnomer in the sense that it was a conviction on the actual California Penal Code section that's titled Human Trafficking. Mm. Yet the way California Penal Code is written, there are uh, a variety of other crimes, and if you use force, fraud, or coercion to force someone into these other types of crimes, or if you are sexually exploiting a minor, mm -hmm. um, so you might be charged with pimping and pandering of a minor. Um, so so, John, pimping, to just explain to, sure. our, uh, to our audience what pimping and pandering is. I think so, most would probably know pimping, maybe not pandering. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Um, yeah. so, so pimping, um, if, if I, if I um, force someone into the commercial sex industry, or even if, if, even if they don't want to, if I'm not forcing them but they want to, but I am facilitating and I am making money from that, that's pimping. Mm -hmm. um, if I am doing something else in support of that, that's typically pandering. So maybe mm -hmm. I'm driving the car, or maybe I'm maintaining an apartment or a house where this activity is occurring. Mm -hmm. But under California law, the district attorney's office might prosecute a case using any of these other crimes that don't, that don't have I the see. title human trafficking. Right. So we end up with convictions on like human trafficking with a small H and a small T, right? right. <laughs> um, and not the uppercase human trafficking because it's right. not the statute. So that's one of the challenges in right. even identifying how many of these cases right. are, are brought to court. Right, and it, uh, we tend to understand, at least I do, that possibly this human trafficking involves international, but many of these, these people possibly are our own citizens, documented citizens. Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Right. And, and it's interesting that um, because how people learn about human trafficking the first time tends to be kind of their, their, their one and only view. So maybe they see a movie mm -hmm. and, and it depicts foreign nationals um, either being the bad guys and abducting Americans mm -hmm. or it's foreign nationals that are forced to cross a border. And so, you know, these are two um, potential ways they see trafficking, or mm -hmm. they'll see something else that's solely focused on U.S. citizens and mm -hmm. children as being victims, mm -hmm. um, and so that's their their perspective. When in reality, um, the the range of victimization is boys and girls, men and women, U.S. citizens and foreign nationals. anybody anybody can be exploited, mm -hmm. and and it's interesting when we see that um, we might often think that maybe victims don't understand their rights or, their, or they don't see how someone could control them. But, but we have cases where college educated, you know, educated people, um, good people, but they end up in a condition where somebody else can just push mm -hmm. the right buttons mm -hmm. on them to exploit them and, and force them to do something they wouldn't otherwise do. Mm -hmm. They're vulnerable in some way, probably. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. they're right. vulnerable. And, right. and traffickers, um, they are masters at finding that vulnerability mm -hmm. and then manipulating that vulnerability to get mm -hmm. somebody to do something that they n wouldn't normally do. Right, and um, how is this affecting us in San Mateo County? Let's just, uh, people who live there, here in this county, um, well, it, like everywhere else in the country, it affects us in several different ways. The first is that particularly if, um, if, if we have children who are teenagers, mm -hmm. particularly um, girls, but, but absolutely boys, and also uh, people who identify in the GT, 
uh, uh, gay, lesbian, um, transgender community mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. also at risk. But um, if I had um, younger children, I would really be watching out for their, their risk of being manipulated by people they meet online. Mm -hmm. that, that, mm -hmm. that can be very mm -hmm. risky. Mm -hmm. um, so, so even though we think our kids are really squared away and they'll talk to us as parents, unfortunately, someone figures out a way to manipulate them and to coerce mm -hmm. them into doing something and now they're at risk of being victimized. Mm -hmm. So it can impact us in that respect. In, in broader aspects, um, you know, it's, it's about the community allowing or, or at least not looking at how our lives are impacted by foreign labor, both here, foreign nationals coming in and doing labor against their will, mm -hmm. but also when we look at the really big picture of human trafficking, a lot of the products that mm -hmm. we use um, or components in those products or food we eat or the clothes we wear, the original sourcing of a lot of that material might have some slave labor along mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. And so that's what makes human trafficking uh, at, at once a very, very, very complex, complex. topic, but also very interesting. Right. There's just so many avenues to, yeah. to discuss. Yeah, and this is a fascinating topic. And getting a little bit deeper into, you touched on it uh, just, just previously, but uh, who are these traffickers? And, and then who are, the, who are the victims? Well, so uh, <laughs> I like to say that, that, that uh, traffickers have imagination and coercive ability. Mm -hmm. and, and when someone can figure out, hmm, how can I profit off of somebody else's labor? And now how can I figure out what buttons to push to make them do that? Then anybody can be a trafficker. Mm -hmm. um, men and women are, are trafficking uh, suspects. It's actually quite interesting when you look at a lot of the sex trafficking that occurs quite often, it's women that are operating the brothels, mm -hmm. that are maintaining the brothels. Um, there have been several federal cases where essentially it is all women running a criminal enterprise. Mm -hmm. Um, they can be foreign born, they can be American nationals or mm -hmm. American citizens. And unfortunately, we're also getting into an area where um, criminal street grant gangs are beginning to understand the profitability in mm -hmm. human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Many of them are moving away from the drug trade. Mm -hmm. And so this has reduced the age of both mm -hmm. suspects and victims. Mm -hmm. And it's and there have been cases where um, you know people under the age of 18 have been traffickers, mm -hmm. so minors are the offenders in this case. Wow, very interesting. Anybody. And it just, opportunists without a moral compass, I guess, huh? <laughs> Couldn't say it better, that's <laughs> yeah. absolutely it. Yeah, absolutely, it's all about opportunity and, and exploiting somebody else. And you, you did, you allude to it that it is, is increasing, it appears to be, because of that opportunity and moving away from the drugs. Again, it appears with any organized crime or, um, uh, these illegal operations that there's a need that can't be filled uh, by by normal um, uh, avenues, and so one resorts to, you know, the uh, the illegal uh, way, and um, so you know the, it, it appears to be increasing. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would say so, but at the same time, to be fair, th this is a very very difficult crime in which to collect really precise data on. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so if we kind of step away from the, the empirical and statistical evidence and just look at what the people are learning who are involved in the response to trafficking, whether it's law enforcement or service pr providers, and, and as I mentioned, for one of the things we're really real, realizing is that criminal street gangs who have traditionally been involved in the drug trade, um, traditionally law enforcement have always had a very aggressive stance on the drug trade. Mm -hmm. We have these drug units um, a lot of enforcement work, um, uh, high uh, criminal, uh, or excuse me, prison exposure on drug crimes. But yet, if you move away from drugs and move into facilitating prostitution, pimping and pandering, under um, California law, under the pimping and pandering laws alone, the sentencing standards are much lower than drugs. Mm -hmm. um, you do not have the same robust response to human trafficking mm -hmm. that you have to drug trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, there's not as much violence. The traffickers, whether they're traf if they're trafficking drugs, they have to worry about their supply chain mm -hmm. and where it's coming from and getting into the country to sell. And once somebody buys that drug and uses it, the drug's gone. Um, if you're trying to manipulate people here in the sex trade, your supply is right out here, mm -hmm. okay? How can you manipulate these people into it? You don't have to worry about that. And um, 
So, so for a lot of very sensible reasons from the criminal's point of view, hey, why not get out of one and go into another area? Yeah. And so we're seeing a lot of that. Right. Right. Also, globalization has created the need for, for cheap labor in, a, in many areas around mm -hmm. the world, including mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are just two factors, but there's many, many more. Yeah, it makes, makes good sense. So how is, is reporting, um, how do you see reporting? Are people reporting these crimes? And, and, and if so, how are they doing it? So it's v actually very rare that a victim of human trafficking walks into a mm -hmm. police station or walks into a company, uh, an agency that provides services to victims and says, hey, I'm a victim of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, very rare. Victims do not I even identify as being enslaved. Um, so, uh, and, and kind of the second piece of that is that the public rarely is able to call up and say, hey, here's where human trafficking is mm -hmm. occurring, mm -hmm. although that does happen. Mm -hmm. um, what we find is like the story you alluded to recently where um, the woman working for the airlines mm -hmm. saw these two girls. Mm -hmm. They both had first-class tickets to travel to New York, and, um, and, and that didn't make sense to her because mm -hmm. they really didn't know where they were going, and neither of them actually had identification, so they mm -hmm. couldn't get on the airplane. Mm -hmm. And so when the two girls, she's asking, well, how'd you get these tickets? What's going on? And they're talking about, well, we met this guy on, on some sort of social media platform. Mm. And he's like, hey, come to New York. Be mm -hmm. a model for a couple, yeah, yeah. couple of days. Right. Well, I'll pay you a couple thousand dollars. Right. Great spot by that employee. Mm -hmm. And so she called the police and mm -hmm. uh, you know they rescued these girls before they were harmed, luckily, because they probably would have been in for a terrible, terrible experience in right. one way. Right, that's awareness, because most of us wouldn't even know, because unless you're actually involved in the services itself, and who's going to report it if one's receiving the services, it, it appears it, it might be even difficult to, it, to see what's happening and, 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 and see that there is a crime being committed somehow. That's yeah. absolutely right, and, and, and that's why one of the things that we do in the awareness and outreach piece of the response to human trafficking is we look for professional sectors that we can train mm -hmm. to show them how they might come into contact Good. with trafficking victims in the context of their work, mm -hmm. which is much more specific than just saying, hey, here's what human trafficking is. Right. And there's been a, a lot of effort in San Mateo County and the Bay Area, um, particularly in the lead up to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of work training hospitality industry, um, uh, taxi drivers and Uber drivers, restaurateurs, mm -hmm. um, hotel operators about the signs of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of that good work has been continuing and will continue into the future also. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, it, it increases the pool of what I like to call potential mm -hmm. identifiers. Right. The effort that we invest in training those people has a much higher return right. um, than, than much of the, the very broad, hey, here's what it is, right. unless we have time to truly mm -hmm. get into the teeth mm -hmm. of it. And that, did that have anything to do with Proposition 13? I'm not really... Well, Proposition 35. Well, 35, excuse me, 35, yes. yes. So Proposition 35 um, in itself did not address um, training sectors. Uh, Proposition 35, which passed in 2012 um, by a huge margin of California voters, it dramatically raised the sentencing, sentencing. standard okay. on human trafficking um, uh, offenders. Um, and it also uh, mandated training for law enforcement that every law enforcement mm -hmm. officer in California should have at least two hours of training on human trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, but there's been other legislation since then um, that has come into play. So in, in California, as we sit here today, there are certain types of businesses, such as um, strip clubs mm -hmm. and, 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 and businesses that might have a uh, nexus to, potentially, to sexual exploitation. Mm -hmm. They have to have a poster, mm -hmm. um, which um, in a couple different languages, which tells people what human trafficking is mm -hmm. and that they have rights and that they can call the National Human Trafficking Hotline. Mm -hmm. California has recently passed another piece of legislation which means that the same poster has to be in place in every hotel and motel in the state by January 1st of next year. Mm -hmm. So we have about uh, eight or nine months I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I think within the county we're going to be looking at our current poster maybe make some changes to it, and then working with our partners through our county collaborative, which we just launched, to, to help distribute those posters and help inform the hospitality industry of that requirement. That's good to hear. And so now tell us a little bit about your background and, 
And, and uh, what is your role in San Mateo County Human Trafficking Program Coordinator? And what, and what are your goals? <laughs> <laughs> well, so in 2006, at the time, I was a sergeant in the San Jose Police Department, and I was given responsibility for this human trafficking grant, and that was my entree, and I never believed, never dreamed that it would take me uh, to all the places uh, and opportunities that I've had since then. Um, I retired in 2011 and uh, started consulting. I do a lot of consulting work for different federal agencies and state agencies and private organizations. I, I do a lot of teaching and speaking. Um, I wrote my book, The Essential mm -hmm. Abolitionist, along the way. And um, a few months ago, uh, former uh, retired uh, chief of police from Daly City, Manny Martinez, mm -hmm. who I worked with many years ago mm -hmm. in San Jose, yeah. called me up and said, hey, do you know about this position in San Mateo County? And um, we talked about it, and I came down and interviewed, and um, uh, I'm, I'm working with some great people at the Sheriff's Office and with the County um, Police Chiefs and Sheriff's Association. Um, we've created a second position um, in the program. We have an advocacy coordinator. That was filled by Pamela Estes, mm -hmm. who is an attorney and a um, uh, very passionate anti-trafficking activist. She is responsible, um, along with some of her colleagues, on the creation of the Before Our Very Eyes mm -hmm. Human Trafficking Awareness Program, mm -hmm. which um, many people saw that at San Mateo County Fair. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> so it's a great opportunity, and, and we have kind of really three main goals in the first few months here. The first is we wanted to create a county-wide collaborative where anybody who's interested in, in this work can come, whether it's governmental, non-governmental, faith, community-based. And so we now have the San Mateo County Human Trafficking Initiative. We've had two meetings so far, and it's, it's a monthly meeting, but we're trying to bring everyone together so we can all learn about what we're all doing. Mm -hmm. this, the next big thing that we're doing is we're doing a county-wide assessment. So we're going and looking at all of the different data points uh, for the first time in the county, and we're gonna be able to say, look, here, as best as we can determine, here are all the cases of trafficking or potential trafficking mm -hmm. that we can identify. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's a lot more work than just going into databases. Mm -hmm. So, And is this what the countywide assessment is? Is that yes. basically what you're doing? Okay. Yeah, so the countywide assessment is really going to look at the scope and prevalence of trafficking. We're going to have a much better idea of how many cases or potential cases mm -hmm. have been identified by law enforcement. We're also talking to all of the victim services providers in the county um, to say, hey, how many victims do you think you've served in the past three years? And we're already getting data from them that is, that is raising a lot of eyebrows because one of the challenges we have without this community initiative, mm -hmm. we don't have people from all parts of this talking together at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you're doing what you're doing and you're you know, helping people over here and I'm doing my thing and helping people here. But if you and I never sit and share those numbers, we have no idea what mm -hmm. our collective work mm -hmm. is. So, so that's a big piece of it. So, um, and then we're also doing some law enforcement operations and training, but in the first few months, our, 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 our main goal is really to get a much better idea of what we're looking at in terms of the problem and then mm -hmm. how to best coordinate our response. Right, and it's, it's good to know what we're up against, but uh, it's exciting to hear that, uh, that the county is taking this really seriously. That's really good news. And, um, are there any challenges uh, in San Mateo County that are similar elsewhere? I would imagine it would be. They're all similar. The, the, the challenges of, of collaboration are similar. Um, the challenges of trying to get everybody on the same page are similar. Um, but there's also um, a lot of similarities that are very positive. We have a lot of passion in the Bay Area um, and in the county. And we have a lot of expertise in the county because it re you, you need people with specific expertise in not only understanding the dynamics of trafficking, but in the unique needs of trafficking victims. Mm -hmm. So for instance, one of the needs that um, doesn't necessarily apply in most people's minds to other types of, of activity is the role of people who are in the United States without documentation. Mm -hmm. And so, um, People who come into the country without documentation, or m more often, actually what happens is a lot of people come into the country with proper documentation, mm -hmm. and then they overstay their visas. Mm -hmm. So now, in any case, they're undocumented. Um, and, and when you are a victim of a crime, human trafficking being uh, you know, one of these, but you know, most major violent crimes, there's actually uh, federal and state immigration relief, federal and federal immigration relief policies that will protect these victims from being deported um, as they work through the road to surviving their ordeal. But you need to have 
trained, experienced immigration attorneys mm -hmm. to help uh, undocumented mm -hmm. um, individuals. And so that's just, that's just one example of the type of expertise that does mm -hmm. reside in the county. Mm -hmm. And so, so we have a lot of those advantages too. Yeah. Which was my next question that you answered. Oh. <laughs> Last chapter in John's book has to do with um, uh, the discussion around um, the uh, victims of traffickers mm -hmm. and are they prosecuted if they're involved obviously with it, but you answered that, so thank you. So last question, can you summarize um, what you would like our viewers to take away from this discussion? Well, I, I, I think most people would should understand that basically in some way, shape or form, all of us are touched by slavery, whether it's the clothes we're wearing, the food we're eating, the products we're buying, or by the fact that um, maybe we just don't stop and think about the people in our own communities that are being exploited by traffickers. Again, whether they're you know, born and raised in San Jose, or excuse me, or San Mateo, or anywhere in the Bay Area, but born and raised U.S. citizens, or whether they are foreign nationals, whether they are here doc with documents, without documents, that, but that anybody can be exploited, mm -hmm. and there's some very nefarious people. And that um, you can support the community's efforts mm -hmm. by studying, maybe reading a book mm -hmm. about human trafficking, becoming informed, but then um, looking for ways to support the trafficking efforts that are out there. Um, you know, the, the assessment is gonna help us realize if we have gaps. Mm -hmm. um, more, more than likely, we probably don't have any huge gaps. We need support politically, within the community, perhaps financial, um, perhaps just by prioritizing human trafficking. We need that support to help the people that are already doing the work do it more often and more effectively and with greater success. Thanks, John. Very My helpful pleasure. and very informative. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. My pleasure. We can all say that, well, human trafficking isn't a major problem in San Mateo County, but in fact, it can and is probably taking place, and we're just not aware of it. Even one teenage girl coerced into sex trafficking or one adult immigrant forced into involuntary labor is not what we want for our country, our state, or our county. It's good to know that people like John are helping to raise awareness of this problem and that you are now on the lookout and are part of the solution. Once again, the National Human Trafficking Hotline is 888-373 7888. Again, that's 888-373-7888. Or you can text message 233-733. That is text message 233-733. Well, thanks again for watching. And please like and share this video. Send your suggestions for topics you'd like to know more about to the email address on your screen. From all of us here at Take Notice, have a safe day.